Welcome back to Super Meat Boy Live. <laughs> Are we going with that now? That I, gonna... can't, I can't let go of it. It was too good on the last Welcome episode. Welcome back to Hammer Bros. Uh, this is Instant Replay Live. Uh, Nick here while Joe plays some Super Meat Boy and uh, oh, gets ground to bits. <laughs> yeah. oh, Whoa. Um, oh, I turned. There, there would be so much cleanup to do in Super Meat Boy's world. Not even just because of these death machines, but because he leaves a blood trail everywhere he goes. Um, there's actually a game, uh, Viscera Cleanup Detail. Have you seen that yet? Mm. You, uh, you, you literally just go through and clean up the, like, alien goo stains or blood stains or whatever from other games. Um, I got the, uh, I think it might be like a demo for, um, the oh. Shadow Warrior one because there's so much gore in that game. Yeah. You have to go and, like, get buckets of body parts and put them in a, uh, an incinerator. <laughs> Stuff like that. <laughs> it's pretty fun. The guys behind the scenes in the the top exactly. action movies. Yeah, yeah, the cleaners. Yeah, there's there's a Marvel uh, like group that Tony Stark and Wilson Fisk actually collaborated on, which is a fun like, you know, the the crime syndicate kingpin and uh, Tony Stark working together is just a funny idea to me. But it's basically the cleaning crew for for any Marvel like big events. Granted, they're not gore cleanup. They're like you know fixing buildings and stuff, but. Shit. Funny stuff. I gotta find a way over this thing. This, so this this like little middle climb here is gonna be really challenging. Yeah. Um, gotta bounce. Uh, Got to time those bounces just right. There you go. There you go. Oh, now get. Oh, 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 I could have just slid, but I panicked. Yep. That's the. That's exactly what I was gonna say. You had it. Mm. So Nick, I'm gonna distract you. Uh, you, you actually, you continue your Wilson Fisk. I, I kind of. I was in the It's zone. okay. You're being a, a, a jerk. Yeah. <laughs> no, I actually had nothing else to say. Okay. Um, so. I, I've been thinking about this today, and I wanted to ask, if you could live on any spaceship and, the, 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 and, and deal with whatever, you know, day-to-day -day spaceship things that that spaceship has to go through, which spaceship would you live on in any, in any fiction? Oh, boy. Um, I feel like there's a really right answer to this, but I want to see if you come to it. Well, um, man, there's so many fun answers. There's right? like, because there, like, there's comedy shows that you can add into oh, this. Oh, yeah. And Red Dwarf. Yeah. <laughs> Which would be a terrible choice. Or, uh, gosh, why can't I think of, there's the, the, another British space show that has the Nick Clegg, wait, no, not Nick Clegg, <laughs> that's not his name, uh, Simon Pegg and Simon Pegg Nick Frost. It. I know Nick Frost is Nick in Frost it. Nick Frost is in it, yeah. Um, I just had to, I had to make that connection. It's not space, because space, space is the one where they're roommates. Oh, oh yeah. Yeah, okay, yeah. but you well, would think it sounds, oh yeah, it's so good. You would think space sounds like a sci-fi show, but it's just them as... <laughs> well, just Simon Pegg with his roommates. Um, God, I, I've watched these things too long ago, I guess, and now I can't remember. But so there's there's the question of, like, do I go with something goofy like that? The, the troubles are less, I feel like, damning in those kind of Yeah, they tend to be a lot more fun. Galaxy Quest is another good example. Oof. Those are pretty severe troubles, but they're fun, you know? Um, so, uh, anyhow... Uh, but then there's the Enterprise. Exactly. That to me is the right answer. Yeah, because, because of the holodeck. Oh, good <laughs> call. Yes, instant replay live coming at you from the holodeck on the USS Enterprise. <laughs> exactly. I wonder if there's let's plays in, uh, in Star Trek. I mean, that's like the ultimate D and D room. It right? is right. Like... I mean, that would be amazing. I would spend my entire life. Well, I say that, but ironically, I don't program games, so like I could be programming. Something and instead I don't. But I wonder I how much. I should have thought about where I'm going. How much? Yeah, <laughs> how much programming is involved in making a holodeck simulation? Well, I mean, the thing we we think about is, man, that's really complex. But the thing that makes programming easy in the future is things that expedite program programs. Well, AI, programming. right? So, um, I mean, we have so many like uh, so many programs that are like Unity, which a whole bunch of the background programming is there, or you can input all the excess programming like you know people put up free they're like mm -hmm. i've made this you know this engine you can use it yeah it's a free open engine. source stuff is amazing yeah exactly that's what i was looking for open source and i mean that programming is just such an open field to be in right now yeah because there's just so but much... i don't do anything with it like i'm a yeah. i'm a lazy person it's something <laughs> oh, i wish God. i had done more with yeah um, well you don't have to not I mean, you could start now. Oh, but it, it is time-consuming. Like, when, oh, I'm sitting down because when I'm sitting down trying to program something, 
I have to be like, I mean, it, oh, I just have to be there for so many hours, and I have so many hours, like so many other things I'm doing in all my hours. Yeah. Like, I don't know. Like, like playing video time. games. Playing video games, writing, <laughs> thinking about like you know D and D sessions or yeah, watching watching XS Netflix. Yeah, I just want to be the writer for games. <laughs> I don't want to do any of the hard work. <laughs> and that's, that's one of those things. Like, yeah. I, uh, if you ever go to like a game design class, they'd be like, "You can't go into this industry being the idea idea guy." Exactly, because everyone has ideas. Everyone, yeah. And if you want your ideas to get life, you have to be able to give them life. It's yeah. Those trouble levels. Um, but it is it is like the dream, right? Like that would be the dream job is to just be the idea guy and mm -hmm. watch them get made. God, that would be incredible. But I think there's, there's some false truth there, too, though, because, like, as with the video game industry, there's so much that goes on with, okay, we have an engine, now we're putting a story on it. Mm -hmm. uh, the story mm -hmm. rarely comes first, yeah. so the idea guy rarely comes first. Yeah. Um, it's, what's our target market, what kind of game are we making? Uh, but I, even that, though, like, even if you had the, like, ability to look at something like... Um, like Portal, right? And they came up with the... because it was an Arbacular drop first you have the portal concept and it works so now you put a story around that if someone said hey here's this really cool mechanic can you make a story around it and to have that freedom yeah that would be that that sort of writing prompt freedom would be kind of amazing uh, so here's actually a really cool i know you don't play magic but magic had a really interesting way they tell the story um, so you don't have to, you don't need it for the game but there are they used to be that they did novels to go alongside it yeah uh, but they Novels are hard to sell, so yeah. they, what they did now. Is I, I remember those. They have and they used to have comics. Too. They have a bunch of writers that do a series of articles that are like, you know, a couple minutes of reading, but they tell small stories of different characters in the mm -hmm. universe. And oh man, the writing is really good. Like you know, they've Wizards is a big company, so they get some top-notch writers and have them do little blurbs about the universe. Mm -hmm. And the magic, the flavor of magic, is just so rich. Um, ooh. Magic is just never... I think collectible things are either 100% my thing or they're not my thing at all. Like, just that's my... If I don't think I can... If I can collect it all, then I don't have any interest in it. Yeah. It's just a, a sort of mental switch. I don't know why. But, uh... Well, I, I don't think Magic's ever been about the collectible nature of it for me. There, I love the strategy of it. But you and... do have a collection that's sizable and have had more collections in the past, too, right? Like... You, you get in and out of cards, so you don't hold on to your collections, but well, you do collect them. I trade for playability, you know? It's it's not like I'm like, oh, I need to have this in my collection. It's, oh, I need this to build a deck. Mm -hmm. um, That's still collecting, though. I suppose so. But it's just, a, it's it's not just about putting a different spin on it. Yeah, and I would say that's true for me. Like, I, I do have collector sentiment. I do want to collect something just to collect it, whether I'm going to use it or not. Like, I try to use my D&D &D miniatures, for example... But I mostly bought them in a phase where I was just like, I can possibly own everything, let me try. Um, I didn't ever get to everything, but I got a pretty sizable collection in the process. Um, but then I do I do try to like make use of them, because I think they can lead to creativity um, in a different way. Like, they can, they can inspire, you know? So yeah. they, they kind of filled a role for me, even if I didn't have direct plans to use them. Um... I'm so, ashamed that this this level is going to take a whole episode, but um, it's, it's this whole game is getting to be that way. Like, well, I, I mean, it, one the level per had episode. To go up, yeah, but oh. I can't imagine playing this. I would lose my mind. Whoa! Whoa. Oh. oh god! <laughs> and I'm going quiet because I'm like watching and waiting for that moment where you're gonna. Where you're gonna break through, and I'm gonna get to go, whoa, yeah! And so, it's not coming, Joe. It's not <laughs> happening, Joe. I, I want to talk about uh, Postal Two. I, oh I think, man, man. So a I ten year later expansion released yeah. recently. Yeah. Um, that <laughs> that game was so offensive to me as a kid. I was like, man, this is awesome, but like, just it, it was like I, there were things that were forbidden to me, even though I watched them South Park. Sure, and, sure. I don't think Family Guy was ever forbidden, but you know, I knew. But yeah. Portal Two or Portal Two. Postal 2 was the first game that I was like, this is bad. Like Portal 2 was forbidden. The, uh, the dance club that, that I remember you setting on fire. I was like, yeah. oh my god, Nick, you shouldn't do that. <laughs> See, I loved it because anything in the context of a video game makes it quote-unquote safe, right? Like, it's, <laughs> it's okay to do whatever you want in a video game because you're not playing out 
a real life desire, you're doing it to virtual characters. You know? Like, I think that's the, the mistake that the media makes sometimes, is assuming that because you are, you know, lighting a bunch of people on fire in a room, which I've done many times, in fact. In like, real life? Uh, uh, not where <laughs> I was going with that, but... Uh, I'm talking about just, like, the Molotov cocktail in a, in a large crowded area oh, yeah. in a video game is a fun thing. Oh, man. Um, that's not a genuine desire, and it's not something that... Just because I want to do it in a video game, I want to do anywhere else. Like, I want to do it to something that doesn't hurt as a result of me doing it. And that's why video games are great. So I never felt like Postal 2 crossed a line. I think it, it sometimes crosses a line in like, okay, this is just not even fun. This is gross or weird or whatever. Yeah. But it doesn't cross a line to vulgar and offensive to me. Um in a way that it should be banned from anything or whatever, you know? Yeah, like, no, uh, it was just, it started to me as a kid who was, like, still yeah, very, like... Impressionable. You know, yeah, goody-two-shoes yeah. kind of kid. Um, <laughs> Were you that? <laughs> well, so I was, a, I, was a, I was a clown, but I wasn't, you know, I, like, I even today, I can't play evil characters. Mm -hmm. Like, I, I have it's a very hard. more, like... Yeah, um, I have a very, I don't know, high-justice sense. I have a hard time being a dick in games. Um, I, like going through and doing all the side quests because I'm like, oh man, I helped everybody, you know? I gave I gave that poor woman who doesn't have any gold a hug. That was yeah, good. it doesn't feel good to play evil for me either. Unless, I don't know, unless there's a freedom to it, like Morrowind. Mm. Or some other open sandbox game where it's like, I'm going to go kill an entire town. And on that note, <laughs> let's end this conversation. <laughs> Thank you guys for watching Instant Replay whoa, whoa, Live. Hold on, let me. We gotta. I want to end this ep, this this level what before is, we move on. No, it's gonna take you too long. We we've are we're already several minutes over. Oh, but I think I can beat it. Sorry, I'm ending it. Oh. <laughs> Putting the hammer down. It's just it feels wrong. Next time on Instant Replay Live, tell us if we should have kept this episode going, or uh, if uh, if we should end it short because you know people have places to be and they can't sit around waiting for Joe to fail over. Really kick it. Kick Yo, it. plans, free stroke, Sonic Golf. Sonic Golf.